Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 4th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Orlando, Florida. Earlier today I wrote a quick article about some of the recent Java deserialization exploits we have seen. Still a lot of crypto coin miners. What was sort of different about this latest attempt was that first of all it was attacking Windows servers, not Linux like some of the prior attempts. Also it specifically did disable McAfee antivirus. Not sure why they just focus on McAfee antivirus. If anybody has any ideas, let me know why you think that's the case. And apparently various implementations of live chat software in web apps do suffer from information leakage vulnerabilities. Now these are these little widgets that you see on various websites that do allow you to chat with customer support. Of course live chat is one brand affected here. Touch commerce, live person are others that are are affected. Now just running the software doesn't appear to automatically affect you based on the disclosure released by Cody Zacharis and Kane Gamble, but instead it does appear to at least in part depend on the actual configuration. Some of the information leaked by these applets is the employee's actual full name, supervisor names, employee IDs, and things like employee email addresses, call center names, and the like. This information is passed to the browser and then sent back to the server. This is a vulnerability that uh, we see a lot in applications that run in web browsers that then connect back to APIs on web servers and the APIs actually return much more data than is needed to actually operate the application on the client. Now since this data is never obviously displayed to the user. It's often missed in initial tests and assessments. But what you really have to do when you assess these applications is use a proxy and look at all the requests and responses coming back from the API. And it looks like we are still having some issues with the Windows Meltdown patch. Remember how Microsoft had to release a special update late last week to fix a problem that was introduced by the January version of the patch. Well, looks like this update doesn't always get applied. Many administrators report where some systems in their network, and it doesn't really appear to be clear why, will not apply this patch if it is being deployed via Bus, the Windows Server Update Service. Now, the patch is marked as non-applicable, so it's possible that there's something different on these systems that essentially makes this patch unnecessary, but there's no clear guidance from Microsoft at this point what may be causing this behavior. And talking about Meltdown and Spectre, Intel released updated guidance on its progress releasing patches for these flaws. And in this latest guidance, they do list a number of CPUs which will not receive a patch for this flaw. Now, most of these are pre-2011 CPUs, so essentially older models that probably aren't really in wide use anymore at this point, but you may want to refer this guidance to see if any of the CPUs that you are using are on this list. Now, when you're looking at Intel's table, what you're looking for is the production status stopped. That essentially means that there will not be a patch released for this particular processor. And well, I started out this podcast uh, with a new update on some of these Java deserialization vulnerabilities. Has certainly been a big issue uh, the last few months with uh, WebLogic, PeopleSoft, and uh, Apache Solar and the like. For those of you who are running the Oracle EBS suite, uh, well, there is now a free pen testing tool that you can use to test your own instances. This is released by ERP Scan which is a company that also provides commercial services uh, to secure these types
type of systems but essentially they now released a simple smaller version of their product to test some of the basic flaws for free in particular it does do some brute forcing on database users or the business suite users it also tests for some of the common java and xml serialization vulnerabilities that have certainly caused a lot of problems lately so if you don't have anything in place yet to scan these products uh, this is certainly a tool that you probably want to give a quick try the tool itself appears to be written in Python. I'm not sure how it compares to some of the other open source uh, options like Metasploit and the like, but seems to be really focused on this particular product, so probably a little bit easier to use. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.